Wonderful good day again, ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV out of Munich, and we keep on continuing to talk about uranium. And uh, it's my pleasure and honor. Now I have Mr. Ab Ad Mr. Adabaska Basin here out of Canada, Ross McElroy. He is the COO and president of Fission Uranium, one of the yeah, hottest uh, companies in the uranium sector. And we want to talk now, of course, about uranium, about your company, about your beautiful project. and. Uh, uh, yeah, what it makes so special. Russ, thank you very much for being here. Good morning, it's a pleasure. Great. Um, Fission Uranium, I just said it, you are the COO, so you are the man behind the scenes. And I said also you are Mr. Arabaska Basin. Um, for how many pounds you would say you were responsible as a discovery in your career? Can you say that? Uh, yeah, I can give a bit of an idea. I started my career in the uranium sector, in the Athabasca Basin. I've uh, been fortunate enough to be involved with five discoveries. Um, Two of them for Fission Uranium, well, Fission Energy, our predecessor, and Fission Uranium now. Um, so, I mean, if you count the number of pounds of the deposits I've been involved with, you're probably approaching uh, six to 700 million pounds of uranium. That's really a lot. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, so let's come directly to Fission Uranium. You are based right. in the Athabasca Basin. It's called uh, Patterson Lake South right. the property. How large is it? How did you find it? How did you come at it? Yeah, the property itself is 30,000 hectares, wow, roughly. That's enormous. It's a large package of land. Yeah. Where it's located is the Athabasca Basin on the southwestern side, so a, a very underexplored area of the basin. Mm -hmm. um, still, obviously, just as prolific as any other part of the basin. Um, what we're finding on that side is a, is a brand new discovery uh, made uh, from drilling last November. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're less than a year into this project already and it's, uh, it's really showing signs of being an absolute world-class deposit. Mm -hmm. I think you brought out the most significant hole in the last week. So can you say <laughs> something about that? Yeah, sure. And made, made it, uh, bring it also please in a perspective what it means, like in ounces of gold or percentage of copper or whatever, so that our, our viewers get an idea what it means what you have found. Sure. Um, it was whole 75 uh, of our drill program. <coughs> what it, uh, the assays themselves, it, it boiled down to over 9% U308 mm -hmm. over a width of 54 and a half meters. Wow. Uh, that's extremely rich, even by the Athabasca Basin standards. Uh, in fact, in the public database that we're able to uh, check the records on, it is the most significant hole. So in other words, the most uranium uh, per volume of any hole uh, that, that's available on record. Um, wow. It certainly uh, eclipses anything I've ever uh, seen and been involved with, and I've been involved in several uranium projects. Um, that grade, when you equate it to gold equivalents, uh, you're looking at uh, approximately six to seven ounces per ton over that 54 meters. Now there's a section in that, uh, in that hole that's about 21 meters of 21% uranium. Wow. The wow. gold equivalent there is 16 wow. ounces of, of gold over that 21 meters. Mm -hmm. There is not a hole out there in the, in the gold sector that, that yes. uh, matches that. So I would say the equivalent of any commodity, this is probably one of the richest holes ever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that would mean that every, if a gold company would bring this out, the price would go skyrocket, right? Y yeah, <laughs> it, it, I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. When you yeah. turn it into, you know, you equate it to other things, even copper, mm -hmm. it, it's sort of the equivalent of about 150% copper. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not possible, but it mm -hmm. does give you an idea for just how, how valuable is? this kind of type of uh, mineralization is. Mm -hmm. How many drill holes do you have done so far? We've drilled about 70 holes into the deposit, 90 holes into the property. Basically, our discovery was on hole 22. Mm -hmm. So we continue on with the, uh, the count from hole 22 onwards. We are now a little over 70 holes drilled into the property. Um, so, you know, and in that time, we've been able to define mineralization over about one kilometer of mm -hmm. strike length, actually over a kilometer. I think more significant than anything, while the grade is fantastic, but it's the shallowness of the deposit. So, How deep the, is it then? Well, it starts at 50 meters below the surface. So, so it's open pitable. It's open pitable, and just to give some context to that, there hasn't been a deposit found like this in the Athabasca Basin for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, it's a sort of deposit that, that started the whole, um, the whole kickoff of the Athabasca Basin in general. Most deposits now are getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm over time, but we've found a, an area now that's, that's shallow, so we're extremely pleased with mm -hmm. it. But it, that would also mean that uh, if 
so you or somebody else would go into production with that, the production costs would be quite low, right? Oh, absolutely. Be, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, a real simple equation there is the shallower the deposit, the uh, more economically feasible the mm -hmm. operation. It's cheaper. It's all about trucking and, and moving ore. So the the closer you can get the ore to the surface, the, the more economically viable the project. So, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And an open pit is how we sort of envision this thing. Mm -hmm. oh, that sounds really good to me. Wow. Um, you said you drilled 75 holes so far. What yeah. was the success rate? Uh, we've drilled uh, this winter. We had a 93% success rate. This summer, we're on a 100% success oh. rate. So really, out of the 75 holes that we're talking about, 71 of them are mineralized. I mean, it's a, well, it's a, it's it's a outstanding. tremendous. It's, I, yeah. I'm not aware of anybody with that kind of a, a success record. Yeah, so yeah. so um, how, how, how does it go on now? Because now is the winter coming. It makes drilling much easier because everything is frozen. You can go by tractor or by lorry or whatever. So this helps a lot. I think also cost-wise it helps a lot. Um, how many holes do you want to drill? And how many holes do you need still to bring out your first 43 one-on-one? Sure. Well, where we're at right now, as I said, we've, we've outlined mineralization over about a kilometer of trend. Uh, it's my opinion that these zones likely connect. Our drilling so far is, is showing that these zones are on the same trend. Uh, infill drilling is, is so far successful in, in expanding. So I do believe they'll connect. Um, this winter's drilling is really designed to start building a resource on the, on the deposit. So we'll have probably four or five drills in the winter time on the working on the frozen lake i mean this is what you can do in this part of the world the ice is uh, three feet thick, so it's um we can put heavy equipment out there we'll drill at least a hundred holes in there and try to define a resource uh, mm -hmm. so we would expect to have a 43 101 resource estimate uh, sometime next year 2014. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You said a frozen lake. I saw in your presentation, also we see it in the pictures in the back, uh, that you have uh, mineralization in the water. Is it is that a problem or how deep are the lakes? How can you mine this in the future? Yeah, uh, it, the mineralization is actually below the lake. There's a mm -hmm. lot of lake cover in this part of the world. Uh, the lakes are very shallow. Mm -hmm. uh, the lake itself is maybe five meters deep. Uh, so the mineralization, as, as I already noted, starts around 50 meters uh, mm -hmm. and again goes down to 300 meters. Um, what, now mining operations of, of uranium deposits in this part of the world, they're, uh, they're all under lakes. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's nothing really unique about mm -hmm. this situation. There's nothing special. Nothing mm -hmm. special. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an engineering uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, process. You dam or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you would put a dam in, drain yeah. the part of the lake that you're interested I in see. and mine it. I mean, this, mm -hmm. is, this is situation normal yeah. for, yeah. for mines, Canadian mines. Mm -hmm. So it, it won't cause any problems. It's standard. It's standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, excellent. That's good. Good to know, because uh, I already was asked questions like this. <laughs> um, coming uh, to the uh, to the property itself, to the mineralization. As far as I know, if I take Arabasca as a map, uh, on the uh, east side we have all those big mines already, like Millennium, Cigar Lake, MacArthur, yeah. whatever. And uh, as far as I know, it's a long structural trend, something like three, four hundred kilometers. Yeah. Um, what what is the structure at your property, or let's say on your side of the basin? Is it also a long trend, or is it only your trend? You said you have one kilometer already of mineralization you found. What uh, is, is it? Is it like like a mirror the west the east is a mirror of the west well yeah i mean look my my whole uh, concept of the basin is the whole area is quite uh, perspective on the all the operating mines in canada right now are on the eastern side what they've noticed is that there is a trend a northwest trend as you already mentioned it's about 200 kilometers long where all the current mines and the big mines are already in play mm -hmm. the western side has these similar trends to it um in our area on, on on Patterson Lake South, it's a north-south trend. Uh, at the northern uh, end, you've got the old Clough Lake uh, pass producer. Mm -hmm. uh, south of that, you have the Shea Creek deposit found in the early 90s. Uh, it's a 100 million pound uh, deposit. And now we've got the uh, PLS deposit down to the south, another 50 kilometers to the south. I think there's a, a large north-south trend. It is a structural trend and all major deposits are always found on these, these sort of structural trends. So I think that we're really dealing with something equally as, uh, as perspective as we have on the eastern side of the basin. What we've done on the PLS project is really open up a, a new area of the basin that other people had essentially ignored.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can say it's a lot of potential there, right? It's tremendous potential. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's uh, as I said, uh, the PLS project itself is showing signs to be mm -hmm. an absolute world-class deposit mm -hmm. uh, in standards of the best deposits in the Athabasca Basin. Mm -hmm. And as people that may understand the uranium sector, mm -hmm. the Athabasca Basin itself is the premier district in the world for uranium. So mm -hmm. yeah, okay. we're extremely excited. Super, sounds fantastic to me. Thank you very much on that. And uh, when can we expect the next news? Is there anything in the pipeline, some drill results, whatever? Yeah, well, we're in the middle of our summer drill program yeah. right now. It's a 44-hole program. We're probably 30 holes into it right now. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we have a constant flow of news. Um, when we drill holes, we, we send out we the radiometrics it. right away, mm -hmm. uh, followed up by assays. We're starting to see assays, as we already discussed, and hole 75 was the, the first hole that we've had assays for. So there's uh, plenty of news, a flow of, of, mm -hmm. of just the actual holes and, and uh, mineralization as well as assays. That'll follow over the next two months. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, we'll follow up with, uh, with uh, plans for the winter program, a okay. very large, aggressive winter program. Wonderful. So we look forward on the news. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure. I'm glad we uh, had the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, me too. And uh, I wish you all the best. And please drill it out and show us the uranium. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Ross. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Ross McElroy. You heard it. He's the COO and president of Fission Uranium. And uh, yeah, it looks not only like a compelling story, it looks like the uranium story. And uh, you heard Ross, uh, he found probably 600 million pounds so far in his life, uranium. So hopefully he can make the billion with fission. We don't know yet, but they drill more and more. And we will see next year the company will have a 43 101 and then the company is in the game. So watch out for it. Thanks for watching us. Bye bye.